Are you getting frustrated that you can't get the house that you want? Are you getting frustrated that you can't beat out an all cash offer? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you the five proven strategies how you can beat an all cash offer. Stay tuned. here thanks for tuning into my youtube channel again in this video i'm going to give you the five proven strategies that i've learned of how you can beat an all cash offer now if this is your first time tuning into my youtube channel welcome i post videos three times a week monday wednesday friday it's all about real estate so if you're interested in learning more about real estate i have some proven strategies that i put out through content to you guys and it's all good stuff. So think about subscribing. Now on to the video. An all cash offer in real estate is the best thing for a seller to see. Normally we see all cash offers have very short closing dates. There's no bank involved. So there's no uh, financing. There's no appraisal. Uh, there's no loan docs. There's nothing to do with the bank involved. So it's a lot more solidified. It's just an all cash transfer. So it's a lot easier for the seller to accept an all cash offer normally an all cash offer would close in a week two weeks max and then when you have financing which the majority of americans that's how we buy homes is through financing normally these deals will close in you know 30 days you know maybe sooner but you know the average date is around 30 days there'll be some contingencies you know there's going to be a bank appraisal so how do you mitigate around this and that's what i'm going to give you i'm going to give you the five ways to mitigate around this and give you the best chance to get your offer accepted using financing. Now, the number one way that you can do this is be fully underwritten. Fully underwritten is the best next thing to cash, and it's basically the bank has looked over all of your financial reports, okay, and they said you can afford this X amount, okay, and it's probably contingent on, you know, a title report, an appraisal, um, but it's the best next thing to cash and in a market that is very very hot Okay, and you have multiple offer situations being fully underwritten is the only way to go So we know that being fully underwritten is the next best thing to cash now There is two other approvals that you can get and they're just one tad lower than being fully underwritten And the first one is pre-qualification, right? So this is at the very bottom level is how you can think of it right? Income, assets, employment, right? It's all verbally stated. It's not verified. And there's no loan documentation that's going to be submitted to the lender, right? So this is just a verbal, right? The lender saying, hey, you know, Tim, you can afford X amount of house. Now you can take this to your real estate agent, right? This is not guarantee that you can get financing for a seller. It's, you know, I'll just tell you it's basically worthless, right? Because you might not even be able to go through with the financing so I wouldn't recommend doing that if you kind of want to you know if you're thinking about buying a house in the future and you're just curious about what you could afford you know you could do this now the next one is going to be a pre-approval letter right so this is going to be income assets employment it's all going to be verified it's all going to look at he's going to analyze your credit score right which is going to determine um, you know interest rate on the loan you can look at loan options Right, and this will simply state, right, you can afford X amount, but it's more verified than a pre-qualification letter. And this is really standard for a seller um, to accept this. And in all deals I've done, the seller, it's fine to have just a pre, you know, pre-approval letter, excuse me. So the next thing is fully underwritten. This is at the very top of the tier, right below a all cash deal. And what this is, it's similar to pre-approval. Everything is verified, your income, your assets, your employment right so basically all that needs to be ordered is an appraisal you might need to fill out some loan documentation right you can look over you know certain loan programs with your lender what loan are you going to pick a 30 year a 15 year um, is it going to be fixed is it going to be adjustable right so these are the little details that you would you know go pick out before you close and then it's as simple as that you would close so to a seller this is way more of a solidified offer than a pre-approval letter, right? Because to a seller, 
they know that the loan's already been fully underwritten, everything's verified, and they know that you can close on the house. So number one, be fully underwritten. Now number two, have you know limited contingencies, have a short inspection period, because with an all cash offer, you can expect limited contingencies, right? There's gonna be no financing contingency, right? There might be a little bit of a you know inspection contingency, but most overall, they're gonna have very limited contingencies. So I recommend make your inspection contingency no more than five days, right? You don't really need more than five days because you have to remember contingencies do not count weekends, at least where I do real estate in Washington, right? Computation of time, it does not count weekends, right? So if you have, if you write an offer on Friday, right, with a five day inspection, right? Saturday and Sunday don't count. So that inspection contingency would end on the following Friday. Right, so you don't really need you know seven two week inspection periods. You know it's ridiculous. Sellers aren't going to look at that. So re I recommend in a competitive market three to five days. Get the inspector out there. You know be snappy with it. Get it done, and you know you're going to be well better off that way, and it's going to look a lot better to the seller. Number three, write a personal note. This is probably my favorite one because you're tapping into the emotional side of the seller. Now, you know, when a seller looks at a purchase agreement, you know, they just see names on the deal, right? Like Tim and Lindsay, right? They don't see the actual face of the people. They don't know the story behind these people. Maybe they've been saving for 10 years to buy this house and it's their favorite house. Their kids love the house. You know, they really, really want the house. Maybe they just moved in to the country and they don't know anybody and they had no money at all and they've been saving, they've been grinding and now they can finally afford this house. So if you just write a personal note, super simple, you know, like, hey, you know, I've been saving for, you know, five years, I've been working so hard, this house is perfect for me and my family, right, my kids love it, please just look at our offer more seriously. Or just anything like that, you know, sign it, maybe even put a photo in there of your family, right? This is gonna tap into the emotional side of the seller and I've seen this work multiple times right because people you know will make decisions based off emotion you know not off logic right they'll look at logic first but that emotional sense will kind of take over and that's what's going to kind of close them on the deal right so this is my favorite one write a personal note and i guarantee you in a multiple offer situation it'll give you the best chance of getting your offer accepted all right number 4 put more earnest money down Right, and this is an uncommon one, okay, but it's a way of navigating around a purchase and sale agreement to give you the best chance as a buyer to compete with an all cash offer. Right, normally in a slow market, you put 1% of the purchase price, 2%, 3%. You know, if you really like the house, maybe put 5%. But before you do that, you have to know, you know, the liability of if you don't close on the house, right, that's going to be the seller's money as forfeiture of earnest money. Right, so you know, I can recommend that to people, and it is a good idea because it does catch the eye of the seller when they see, hey, you know, you're putting 5% of the purchase price. You know, this buyer has a lot of skin in the game. They must be really motivated. They might must really, really want the house. So, you know, so that's a good tip. Don't put 1%, right? If you want the house and you have five, six, seven, eight offers on a house, some of them are all cash, right? You're gonna have to, you know, your offer is gonna have to stand out. Right, so maybe put four or five percent earnest money. All right, so number five, let the seller pick the closing date. Right, a lot of people don't even think about this one. Letting the seller pick when they want the house to close can be a tremendous upside to the seller. Right, when people write purchase and sales, normally you write a definitive date on when you want it to close, but letting the seller pick can open up a ton of avenues for you as a buyer wanting to get your offer accepted. And this goes back to being fully underwritten because being fully underwritten, you can close a lot sooner than say if you just had a pre-approval, right? Being fully underwritten, maybe you can go from the average of a 30 day close and there's some programs where maybe you could close in a week, right? This is almost the same as all cash. And to some sellers, it is the same thing because you're guaranteed that you can close on the house, right? Everything's been verified. And with cash, right, they know that you have all the cash to close on the house. So basically, it's just weighing the two. And if you do that with a personal note, I guarantee you that, you know, you might get your offer accepted over the other one.
So there you guys have it. Hopefully you found this video very informational. You know, I know it can be super frustrating when you've been looking for a house for a couple months, you know, even a year, and you get beaten out by an offer by like five or $10,000, and you're like, what could I have done to possibly get that house? Right, so if you're not in the position to purchase it all cash, 100% be fully underwritten, limit your contingencies, do a short inspection around three to five days, write a personal note. This is extremely effective. You tap into the emotional side of the seller, right? Tell your story. It will help, I guarantee it. Um, number four, put more earnest money than normal. You know, maybe put four or 5%, but know the liability that you could possibly lose that earnest money, right? If you don't close on the deal, right? And then let the seller pick the closing date. And this goes back to being fully underwritten, right? You can do a short closing date, okay? And let the seller pick when they want to close. You know, that's a huge upside to the seller. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate the support. Stay tuned for my videos coming Wednesday and Friday this week. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button. It would be greatly appreciated. And if you haven't already, check out the videos that I posted last week. I toured a $1.7 million house. It's absolutely beautiful. And maybe this video over here might catch your attention as well. All right, guys, we'll see you.